You know how your mom would always say things to you like, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Well, guess what? Your mom and I were together last night and we've decided we're getting married. So I'm your new mommy now and I'm mad and disappointed. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business. Today, we are going to be talking about a book series, particularly a book series called Heartstopper, which I have reviewed on this channel before. It is a series that I absolutely love, and it was recently adapted into a series on Netflix, which I also absolutely loved. I think it got a lot of unnecessary hate, and today we're going to talk about one of the most devastating examples of that unnecessary hate that resulted in something that should never happen to anyone in the YA literature community, especially those who are of a younger age in their teenage years, stuff like that. But I think it can also spark an interesting conversation about what it means for representation in media and what it means to demand too much of somebody and all of that kind of thing. But you know why I'm so disappointed and why I'm so mad is that I've made a video on this exact topic before and nobody, nobody ever learns. We're gonna get into all of that. But if you're new here, please take a minute and subscribe to this channel. Every Monday and Wednesday and Friday at 11 a.m. Central, I put out new videos on this channel all about books and business. We do some literary analysis. We talk about business ethics. We talk about the ethics of book publishing and the ethics of literary analysis and everything in between. So if you like that kind of stuff, you'll wanna ring the little notification bell so that you'll get notified when new videos come out. Here's some context. So Heartstopper is a book series created by Alice Oseman. It is a series of graphic novels targeted at a young adult audience. And one of the things that is so great about this series is that it has a lot of LGBTQ representation, but does so in a very positive type of way. While it does deal with realistic issues like bullying and some levels of homophobia and transphobia that often young people today still do face, even if it often is in some cases better than it was in decades of the past. The books don't focus on that. They actually focus a lot on the joy of having a supportive group of friends, the joy of finding someone that you love and that you can trust, the different types of relationships that people can have in their teenage and young adult years, whether that is a male-male relationship, a female-female relationship, a male-female relationship. But what's wonderful is that this series really does feature characters from all across the LGBTQ spectrum, people of every single letter of that acronym are going to be in this book series and thereby in the show as well, which is pretty faithful as an adaptation of the book series as far as it goes. I will link up in the cards the full review that I did of Heartstopper, which I did right after the Netflix adaptation came out earlier this year. So you can go ahead and take a look at that if you want to see my overall thoughts on the series, which I absolutely thought was fantastic. Heartstopper started out as a webcomic, which was then published into a series of graphic novels, which was then adapted into the Netflix show, which came out in earlier in 2022 and received a lot of different types of feedback and reception. Now, a lot of people like me absolutely loved it. I thought it was super cute and I thought seeing that type of joy among people across the LGBTQ spectrum is extremely important because we already have a lot of movies and shows and stuff about LGBTQ trauma. And that's not to say that those things shouldn't be made because they absolutely should because those stories are important and those things are still happening and we do still need to talk about those things. But I saw the show getting a lot of hate saying, is this show really good queer representation? because it doesn't show any drugs or any sex or any excessive drinking and partying culture. And I was like, did you miss the fact that this show is about kids? Like, yeah, they're in high school, but they're kids first and foremost. And I think it's important to remember that a hypersexualized teenage experience wasn't part of everyone's experience. It was for some people, but it wasn't for others. And I think it's also really important to remember that people go through uh, periods of being ready for sex or not ready at different rates. And that of of course, there are some people who never experience sexual attraction who are on the asexual spectrum as well, and that's also completely valid. I did hear that in season two of the show, because it has been renewed for a second season, that in season two, one of the characters, I believe, is going to come out as asexual, which I'm very happy to see that as well, because we're getting, again, more characters with a diversity of experiences, and I love that. But even among people who are not asexual, even among people who are heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, whatever, you'll still have people who, some of them at age 16, feel really ready to engage engage in sexual relationships and those type of physical intimacies with each other. And then you'll have some people who aren't interested or emotionally ready or physically ready or whatever until they're 
24, 25 years old. I have friends who are straight men who weren't interested in sex until 26 or so. And that's not to say that there's anything, like sure, sometimes we'd be like, hmm, is this guy straight or whatever? But overall, there's nothing wrong with people experiencing things at different times in their life or having different sets of experiences. And overall, I really liked that there is a show out there that isn't so hypersexualized because at the end of the day, queer culture doesn't have to be solely about the sexualization of it. It's also about the romance, about the love, about the friendships and the bonds that you form with other people. So I actually really liked how this show was about that. Now that's my personal opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but I love Heartstopper and I'm gonna defend it with my life. Now, why am I making another video about this? What happened? Well, you may remember that about a year ago now, this seems to happen every year, doesn't it? This seems to happen every year. About a year ago now, I made a video about a controversy surrounding another very popular piece of LGBTQ media, the movie Love, Simon, which is based on the book Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which is written by Becky Albertalli, whom I love and also will lay my life down to defend this woman. I love Becky so much. And you know, uh, I guess I'm biased at this point because ever since I made a video defending her, she actually reached out afterward and she's now been on my channel and we're friends now, which is great because I love meeting other LGBTQ authors. I think it's extremely important for us to all kind of get to know each other and be there to support each other. But in that video, basically what I talked about was the fact that what Becky experienced was a lot of people basically talking about, okay, why is this woman writing all of these books about LGBTQ characters? Because Love, Simon was about about a young 16-year-old uh, boy realizing that he was gay and having his first relationship with another man and struggling with whether or not he wanted to come out. That was that whole thing. And then she wrote a sequel, Leah on the Offbeat, which was about one of Simon's friends, Leah, realizing that she's bisexual and also potentially having an interest in a girl in their friend group and what that might be like. And people were like, why is this woman who is, as far as we know, a straight woman writing all these pieces of LGBTQ literature? It got into this discussion about what the Own Voices movement meant and whether representation in literature, whether you could write from the perspective of a character who didn't share your experiences. Now, I have talked about this on my channel before, and I will die on this hill. I think that it is fine to write about whatever the fuck you want, as long as you do it well. And I've given this example before. As, as far as I know, uh, Hank Green is a straight man, and in his book, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing, the main character, April, is a bisexual woman. If Hank had to only write about straight men, I don't think I would have enjoyed the book as much if the main character were a straight man, and I think he did it well. I personally did. I related to the character. I understood what she was going through. So my thought on this has always been, do it well, right? Do it well. And then people make this argument where you're like, okay, but what if you end up taking away spaces in publishing from someone who could write that from an own voices perspective? And my thought has always been, well, let's critique the capitalist book publishing corporation system that causes there to have to be some type of scarcity of stories that can be told in the first place because having scarcity in storytelling is fucking dystopian and I hate that. But at the end of the day, I have always believed that you should be able to write about whatever you want because in order for us to be able to determine who is allowed to write what, that inherently means that we are entitled, we as the audience feel entitled to personal information about other people's lives when some people really do just want to be judged on their work and the quality of their work. Now, as a quick disclaimer, that is not to say that if a book has representation in it that you find offensive or that you think perpetuates harmful stereotypes, absolutely put that in your review. Even honestly, like I've read books written by LGBTQ authors who write LGBTQ characters and the characters I thought were written really poorly. And I will still put that in the review. It has nothing to do with the author's identity. It has to do with the execution of the work. However, again, feel free to call out whatever you want. And this is just my opinion. I also don't think there's anything wrong with using own voices as a marketing tactic or as a way to say, hey, this book is written by someone who has that specific experience. This book is written by someone who does know the intricacies of this type of situation and who has lived that life. I think it's great to have that as an extra selling point, as something that we can push it further with that and use that as a way to say, hey, yeah, prioritize this book, but that you can prioritize those books without criticizing other authors whom you perceive as not that identity enough. And now this is where we get into one of the biggest themes that I talk about on this channel a lot, which is of course, bisexual erasure. I've talked about bisexual erasure on this channel a lot before, and I get sometimes comments from people being like, bisexual erasure can be annoying, but it's not really dangerous. No, it is dangerous. And we are seeing yet another example of this play out in the topic for today's video. So what happened a year ago? 
was basically Becky Albertalli started getting all of this hate of people saying, you're a straight woman. Why are you writing all these LGBTQ characters? Why are you appropriating queer culture? Why are you capitalizing on this? Why are you queer baiting? Whatever. People started this whole thing about that. And to put a stop to the harassment, she basically had to out herself. She was like, hey, no, actually, I'm not straight. I'm just in the closet. Why can't I come out on my own terms? And what was so disgustingly ironic about it was that in Love, Simon, in the story, part of it was about being a, a person who's not ready to come out yet and deciding what your own terms are and the fact that no one else should get to determine that for you. It's like people had no fucking media literacy. People completely missed the point of the book. And imagine my shock when that happened again with Heartstopper. The reason I'm talking about bisexual erasure specifically here is that a lot of people assumed Becky was straight because she, I believe, is married to a man right now. And as far as long as she's been famous, she has been in a relationship with a man. But it's amazing how that works, how when you're bisexual, you could end up with a man, with a woman, you could end up with anyone because you're attracted to all the genders, right? It's amazing. It's amazing how that works. So anyway, when people just make assumptions or people assume straight to be the default and that anyone who's not publicly willing to be out about their sexual orientation or publicly willing to present a same gender relationship to the audience as if they're owed that in some way, people just start assuming that someone must have these intentions of queer baiting or these intentions of trying to profit off of another community. And all that leads to when you're criticizing people, people themselves and their personal lives rather than the quality of their work, it leads to situations where people are forced to out themselves, which is wrong and dangerous and is unacceptable in all circumstances. And guess what? It happened again. That's right. It happened again. I here thought that people would have learned something. I thought people would have learned something. I, I expected too much. I expected too much of fucking book Twitter. I expected too much of the internet, of people to have any level of media literacy, any level of being able to learn from the past, and any sense of remorse. Because from what I'm seeing on Twitter, people who caused this next situation to happen, don't, they don't seem to feel any remorse about it. Uh, we're gonna talk about it, okay? The Netflix adaptation of Heartstopper stars somewhat of an ensemble cast, but two of the main characters are Nick and Charlie, whom, you know, I talked about in my Heartstopper review in full, but Charlie is a young boy who was outed as gay against his will, causing him to be the target of some bullying at school. It's amazing how these are the plots of the, the media that people end up doing this about. Isn't that amazing? Like people, like they don't understand the plot. Anyway, that happens to him. And as he's coming to terms with being out before he was ready, he ends up meeting this guy named Nick in his class and they end up striking up this unlikely friendship since Charlie's kind of a nerdier, more quiet and shy type of guy and Nick is a very popular rugby star at the school, but they end up becoming really close friends. Charlie soon realizes that he's falling in love with Nick, who he's not sure if Nick even has the capability to be interested in guys at all since Nick all along has only ever showed interest in women. But then from Nick's perspective, you're getting the fact that Nick is discovering that he might be bisexual and then he and Charlie actually end up together. That's not a spoiler because it's a pretty big premise of the show as a whole and their relationship is one of the driving forces that leads them to form this new group of friends with other queer characters in their high school and it's very cute, very sweet, all of that. Nick and Charlie were played by two actors. Uh, Charlie's played by a guy named Joe Locke who has gotten very popular and honestly did a very great job in the role. He looks just like the comic version of himself. It's pretty amazing. And Joe Locke Locke, as an actor, is also out about the fact that he's gay. So now all the, because these characters are played by teenagers and they are playing teenagers, most of these actors and characters are like in the 16 to 18 range. They're not very old. I remind you guys, I came out when I was 24 and I am very loud and open about being in the LGBTQ community. I am not shy about that whatsoever, but even I took until I was 24 to come out, okay? People take different amounts of time to come out depending on life circumstances, when it's safe, what, what their relationships are with other people, just what they feel mentally ready to be able to do. It's just so many different factors and circumstances and everyone should have the opportunity to do that on their own time. At least that's what all of these media properties are saying and then people who are supposed fans of them seem to not be able to get that through their head. I don't get it. So anyway, kudos to Joe Locke. That's pretty amazing. I'm always very proud of people who come out when they're teenagers just because I definitely wasn't ready to do that. But awesome for him. Now his co-star is Kit Connor and he is kind of the subject of the controversy that ended up happening. So Kit Connor plays Nick 
on the show. Nick is the character who's the rugby star who eventually realizes that he is bisexual. Now, when the show came out, there was an interview with the author, Alice Oseman, who basically said that a lot of the actors do play characters who share identities with them. So for example, there is a trans girl named Elle on the show and the actor who plays her is a trans girl as well, which is awesome, right? So a lot of the characters, and, and then there was also the fact that Joe Locke, who plays Charlie, plays a gay teenage boy, and he is a gay teenage boy in real life. So she was, she was bringing that out. A lot of these actors have been open about their lives, but not all of them have, because again, nobody owes any anyone knowledge about their personal life. Actors are there to do a job and keep in mind that a lot of these people started as child actors and if you haven't seen my video on Jeanette McCurdy we can talk about how exploitative the child acting industry is as a whole. So the very fact that like these people were put into a career of acting as children and now the public wants personal information about their lives, like that is a that is a personal choice, okay? So not every actor has been super public about their lives, yet for some reason, a lot of people really wanted to know if Kit Connor, the guy who plays Nick, if he himself was part of the LGBTQ community. Now, Kit would regularly go on social media and say things like, hey, that's my business. That's really not anyone else's business. I'll talk about it if and when I want to. Just leave me the fuck alone and let me live my life. I'm playing a character here. I am acting. And he's also in another movie recently where he has a female co-star and then people started speculating them of dating. So what happened next is what really, really disappoints me. And we're going to look at a few articles and examples about what happened and some responses to this. Because y'all, I'm just... I'm mad and I'm disappointed. You guys got a new mommy in town and she's mad and disappointed, okay? So if my previous example about what happened with Becky was anything to go by, it shouldn't be a shock when the other day Kit Connor came out as bisexual, was basically like, you guys forced me to do this, this didn't feel safe, you guys didn't understand the fucking point of the show I'm on. That's what happened. We're, I'm so, I'm so mad. We're gonna talk about this, okay? All right, so this is from Vanity Fair under a thing called Gay Wrongs. Now, normally I'm a fan of puns. I don't, I don't, I don't like this here though. It feels, it feels cringe and uh, inappropriate. I don't know why. Anyway, let's, let's talk about this. Why Heartstopper star Kit Connor was forced to come out as bisexual. I think the fact that forced is in quotes here is meant to refer to the fact that he himself said he felt forced, so it's supposed to be a direct quotation. So I think the quotes are being used literally and not in a way to say, like, that they don't truly believe he was forced, because he was. Anyway, let's see. So there's Kit Connor. There's the star. There he is. Heartstopper star Kit Connor has come out as bisexual on social media, claiming that fans of the Netflix series were forcing him to reveal his sexuality. On Monday, the 18-year-old returned to Twitter after a seven-week absence from the social media platform and came out. Can I just say real quick that I am grateful that when I was a teenager, we didn't we didn't feel forced to be on social media. I guess towards the end of my teenage years, we kind of did. But I just I feel bad if people are like, oh, he took he took a seven week absence from Twitter. Like he's an actor, dude. Let him do his job. He doesn't owe you Twitter. <laughs> anyway, here's what he tweeted. Back for a minute. I'm bye. Congrats for forcing an 18 year old to out himself. I think that some of you missed the point of the show. Bye. I love this. He's just like directly. I mean, I don't love that this happened. I love his response. He's just directly to the point. He's like, you missed the point of my show because they did. People missed the point of Love, Simon, and then they missed the point of Heartstopper. We've got all of this really solid, well-written, heartwarming, LGBTQ young adult media out there that is can be so helpful to LGBTQ youth and people in their teenage years as they're discovering who they are. There's all of this media out there and then people are just completely missing the point and causing it to spread further hate further homophobia and biphobia specifically, which is the issue here that we'll get into. Based on Alice Oseman's self-published webcomic turned New York Times bestselling graphic novel series, Heartstopper is a queer coming of age romance which follows Charlie, Joe Locke, a recently out teen at a British all boys school and his relationship with Nick, played by Connor, an assumed straight rugby player coming to terms with his own sexuality. Irony is lost on some people. Do I need to do I need to become English teacher savvy and teach you guys literary devices? Because some of y'all have no media literacy and no understanding of what irony is, okay? The show is a massive hit for Netflix, holds a 100% average tomato meter on Rotten Tomatoes, and has already been renewed for season two. We love to see that I can't wait for Heartstopper season two. An outpouring of support flooded in for Connor after he posted his tweet, which has over 805,000 likes and counting, particularly from the Heartstopper cast and creative team. Locke, Connor's co-star and love interest on the show, replied to his tweet writing, you owe nothing to anyone. I'm so proud of you, my friend. We love it. 
We appreciate that. I love when we've got the gay and bisexual solidarity because a lot of, a lot of Twitter likes to act like there's some kind of wedge there. But in real life, we all gotta be there for each other, okay? Heartstopper author Ozman also took to Twitter to lend support to Connor replying to his tweet, I truly don't understand how people can watch Heartstopper and then gleefully spend their time speculating about sexualities and judging based on stereotypes. I hope all those people are embarrassed as fuck. Kit, you are amazing. Thank you, Alice, right? And here's the thing though, nobody who did this feels any remorse and that's what I'm especially upset about, okay? Connor's mega viral tweet has sparked debate online about the concept of queer baiting in which presumably straight people, often cisgender men, pretend to be queer in a bid to get attention from the LGBTQ community and raise their own platform. Now, this is what's extremely important to know about queer baiting. Queer baiting is a term meant for fiction. It is not meant to apply to real people. Real people can't queer bait because real people can still be closeted, okay? I think a lot of people don't fucking realize this. So one example of queer baiting that people would bring up back when the show was still on before the finale was the show Supernatural, which I never watched. And then I know at the end, they made the characters actually have some kind of like LGBTQ relationship with each other and it was done really weird. I didn't watch it, so I, I can't comment too much on that. But that was an example people talked about. I think the show Rizzoli and Isles, people talk about that with. Basically, the whole idea behind queer baiting is this idea that in a movie, in a TV show. Oh, people talk about it with like the Sherlock, the Benedict Cumberbatch version of Sherlock, where it's like the, the writers of the show and the producers of the show will often make it look like two of the characters are set up to be romantic or sexual love interest to each other if those characters are the same gender. And then the show, because they don't want to lose their straight audience and they don't want to lose their conservative audience or whatever, they will never have those characters be in a relationship together, but they will keep playing off as if it's a will they won't they kind of thing and putting in subtle hints about it or maybe little jokes about it so that LGBTQ people watching the show will think that there's a chance and then there it's it's Mac on it's always sunny I'm playing both sides so they always come out on top except they're not actually playing both sides in like the bisexual way and they're not coming out on top like what I did with your mom last night instead they're just being an asshole right okay so that's what queer baiting is. Real people can't do this. When people accuse real people of queer baiting, what they normally mean is this person isn't out about their sexual orientation, but is participating in queer media in some way, which you don't know that person's life story. Yet you gotta let people have some semblance of privacy, okay? Let's continue. After Heartstopper premiered, Connor addressed the inquiries into his sexuality, tweeting, Twitter is so funny, man. Apparently some people on here know my sexuality better than I do. So basically people kept asking him, hey, are you part of the LGBTQ community? Are you bi like your character is? Are you like capitalizing on this? Or are you actually a queer person? Like, tell us. First of all, the dude's 18. When you have children playing these parts, how do you expect children to even know? Okay, some people who are 18, 19, 20, they don't even know themselves yet. So that means they can't, they can't do any of these roles because they don't even know. What if you're questioning? You don't owe people that, okay? This is just absolutely ridiculous. I hate this. And I hate it too because like I wrote lots of queer media before I myself came out. I didn't publish a lot before then because I did come out at 24 and that is pretty young for, you know, book publishing and stuff like that. But I was always writing LGBTQ stories. I had queer women in my stories. I had queer men in my stories. I had plenty of LGBTQ characters and stories that I wrote all throughout high school and college. In fact, I often like gravitated more towards writing female-female relationships when I was in college for things just because it made sense to me and I wasn't out yet, okay? So I'm glad nobody told me I wasn't allowed to write that just because I didn't want to share my entire personal life with everyone. And I say this as a person who's pretty open and likes to share my personal life with everyone, okay? While promoting the series as a guest on the Rain with Josh Smith podcast, Connor said he felt perfectly confident and comfortable with my sexuality. I'm not too big on labels and things like that. He continued, I'm not massive about that and I don't feel like I need to label myself, especially publicly. And he has every right to do that because he's his own person and I can't believe people didn't just let it go. In September, the 18 year old sparked allegations of queer baiting from fans for simply holding hands with Maya Rafiko, his female co-star in the forthcoming YA adaptation, A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. So here's what happened, guys. He's in this movie, A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow. His co-star is this woman, Maya, and the two of them were seen holding hands out and about. People started speculating that they're dating. Are they dating? 
Maybe they might be. I don't know. I don't care what people's personal relationships are because I don't know these people and that's not my business. I don't care what 18 year olds are doing in their personal time, okay? Because that those are kids. Let them, let them date, let them have their teen relationship if that's what they want. What is disgusting to me is that it sparked allegations of queer baiting because he might be dating a woman. I don't know if you guys know this. Can anyone tell me what bisexual means? Like if Matt Walsh walked up to you on the street with a gun to your head. Oh my god, like, I just don't get this. If you are bisexual, which first of all, Kit was not even out as, but I just don't get how people would see him with a woman and s assume... He must be straight. He must be straight and queer baiting, which first of all, real people can't do. But even in an alternate universe where that could happen, I don't know how they just saw him with a woman and were like, oh, well, must be straight. Washing our hands of this. We're done. Pack it up. Go home, boys. It's time to criticize this teenager on the internet for something that may or may not be true. Wh why did that go through people's heads? Because don't forget, even if he's dating a woman, that doesn't, like, his character on the show is bisexual. So if even if people were like, you have to play characters that are exactly the same as you, which you don't because it's acting, but regardless, even in an alternate universe where you had to play characters who are exactly the same as you, him dating a woman still would not exclude that possibility. Because even on the show Heartstopper, he was bisexual there, too. So I'm like, I'm so lost, okay? And here's another thing. A lot of the Heartstopper fandom had an issue with the fact that on the show, before Nick and Charlie get together, Nick does briefly have a female love interest. Now, the two of them never end up getting together because around the time that they're supposed to go on their first date, that's when he starts to realize that he has feelings for Charlie and wants to be with Charlie instead. So that's what happens. But people get mad at this girl like she almost ruined the main ship. And it's like, my dude, if you are bisexual, you can date, you can date people of different genders. That's, that's, that's there. That's, it's there in the name. It's there in it, okay? That's what people are communicating to you. So I don't get why people, the fact that people would be mad about that alone even offended me. I was like, you know what? I kind of wish that he did actually date Imogen, this girl. I wish that they did date for a little bit. And then maybe later he could have got with Charlie. Like, I kind of wish that he did date her for a little bit. Just because that's important. So this was just yet another example of bisexual erasure of people being like, you're with this gender? Well, the gender of your current partner must obviously define your entire life life, right? Fuck off, okay? Shortly after the internet frenzy, Connor deleted his Twitter with many outlets suggesting that he had done so due to the allegation. Gutted to see Kit has left Twitter due to queer baiting accusations, tweeted LGBTQ digital media publisher Pink News. He doesn't want to label his sexuality, which is entirely his choice. Shout out to Pink News for that. Some support around Connor's coming out suggests that accusations of queer baiting, which have surrounded stars like Harry Styles and Charlie Puth, which have they have both denied, may have gone too far. All right, here's the thing I don't get with Harry Styles, too. I, I don't really know who this Charlie dude is, but Harry Styles, let's talk about him. So Harry Styles sometimes likes to dress in clothes that are more traditionally feminine. Sometimes he will wear a dress. Sometimes he will wear stuff that's cut in a more traditionally female figure, although anyone can have any body type, right? My point is Harry Styles will sometimes wear clothes that don't look traditionally masculine. And then in interviews, when people have asked Harry Styles about his sexual orientation, which is rude to do in the first place, don't do it. He has been like, I don't really want to label that. I don't really want to get into that. And then he has regularly been seen dating women. I believe he dated Olivia Wilde or is still dating Olivia Wilde. There was a whole mess with that. Anyway, a lot of people have accused Harry Styles of queer baiting. And I'm like, where? First of all, we don't know if Harry Styles is straight. Maybe he's straight. Maybe he is bisexual or pansexual. Or maybe he is straight. And if he is a straight man, in what way did he queer bait? He didn't like make a reality show where he pretended to date another man and, and tried to get people invested in a fake relationship. What he did was just dress in not specifically adhering to prescribed gender roles kind of ways. And I always thought that we didn't have to reside solely within specific gender roles. I thought that it was okay for people to dress however they wanted. I thought it was okay to say, hey, you know what? If you're a straight cisgender man and you want to wear a skirt, go right ahead because toxic masculinity is the only thing keeping you down, right? That's what teens on Twitter would say. And then they turn around and say, Harry Styles is queer baiting. What is the alternative? What's the alternative? He has to just dress in like solely traditionally masculine outfits. Otherwise people will get mad at him. You're doing the same thing conservatives are doing at that point. You're making literally the same fucking argument that Jordan Peterson makes when he says that the movie Frozen is propaganda because the it isn't about a girl getting with a prince in the end. 
And anything that subverts expectations is inherently political. That's Jordan Peterson's dumbass argument that we all rightfully tore to pieces. And then people will do the same thing about Harry Styles, where they'll say like, well, if he's going outside the norm, it's obviously either an expression of a LGBTQ identity or it's a marketing tactic, or maybe he just likes it, dude. I mean, we can be cynical about the fact that companies want to brand people as entire brands within themselves, sure. But like, don't just judge someone on the way they dress. So anyway, I have an issue with people accusing, I don't even give a shit about Harry Styles. I just have an issue with that on the principle of the fact that it's basically saying that we're actually not allowed to dress or present ourselves however we want. Otherwise there could be an issue even from supposedly pro LGBTQ people who say they're on the side of people having free choice to do whatever they want with their own bodies and present however they want and move outside of gender roles and all of that kind of stuff. Then they turn around and say, no, actually not like that. No, fuck that. I'm gonna do whatever I want. Harry Styles can do whatever he wants. Kit Connor can do whatever he wants. Kit, my American girl doll, can do whatever she wants. Isn't that right, Kit? Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know what, Kit? We're gonna, we're, you and I are gonna defend this Kit together. Kit's gotta stick together. That's what I say. So this is an LGBTQ, like, rights type of account on Twitter that I've seen. This, this guy tends to tweet pro-LGBTQ stuff, which is pretty great. He said, the natural conclusion of queer baiting discourse is mobs of people harassing and intimidating a celebrity into publicly declaring their sexuality before they're ready and somehow thinking it's a righteous act. Come on, y'all, grow up. Couldn't agree more, okay? This 18-year-old has more maturity than all of you. So, of course, let's see what my girl Becky said to respond to this, because as you guys may remember, as I just said earlier in this video, Becky herself went through this as well. I also want to give a shout out to my mom who liked this and also commented on Becky's post to show her support. I love you, mom. Here's what Becky said. Kit Connor was pressured out of the closet and I'm so fucking angry. Oh, I'm sorry, Kit. You're too young to hear swearing. I'm going to put you over here. This kid is only half of the other kid's age. And even, even he's too young to be dealing with this shit, okay? I can't believe we're still treating queer people like this. I know you're tired of hearing me talk about it, but the casualties keep piling up and we still haven't learned. How many victims does bisexual erasure have to claim before people will actually acknowledge that it's dangerous, okay? And it's dangerous on the coming out level. It's also, I'll talk about this in a later video eventually. Bisexual erasure is actually like physically dangerous too. Here's an example. I'm a woman, so I wasn't allowed to get the monkeypox vaccine. How, how is that dangerous? How is that dangerous? Um, because a lot of people were saying uh, that monkeypox was this disease primarily spreading in gay male communities. Who do bisexual men have sex with? Gay men and women. Wow. Anyway, let's continue. It is dangerous. People don't owe us their labels, even public figures, even if they're involved with the creation of queer media, even if they profit from that involvement, even if we hate what they created or they said something problematic in an interview once, they don't owe us their labels. Yes! Becky speaks nothing but the truth. We stand Becky, okay? We can choose whether or not we engage with their work. We can critique their art and their public statements. Yes, it can be tempting to frame that critique by invoking your perception of their identity. I know it feels like relevant context, but we have to check ourselves because actors and authors and artists are real human people. Their identities are not public property. Yes, Becky. Yes. Thank you, Becky. Oh my God. I'm begging you to learn the difference between critiquing a system and harassing a person. Please remember that closeted people exist. It just blows my mind how many people forget this when Becky's work and Kit Connors work, these properties were about people who started off closeted. And yet people are out here forgetting that that's a possibility when it's right there in the text. Learn to read. People need to learn to read. Make space for them. Have the humility to realize you won't always know who's aloe, cis, head, and who's closeted. And please stop doubling down if you get it wrong. Stop scrambling for reasons this particular person deserved it. You don't need to weigh in about whether you liked their statement. You don't get to decide whether this person was harmed by this experience. And if your complicity makes you feel uncomfortable, try to sit with that. Your discomfort does not mean you were victimized by a stranger who was coerced out of the closet. Dude, Becky right here literally just said, if this makes you uncomfortable, then go sit in the corner and think about what you did. Dude, Becky is mommy over here too. And she is mad and disappointed. She's like, mm, you want to take five minutes and think about what you did? You do? And you want to tell me how you're going to do better next time? I think normalize that. Normalize putting Twitter adults in timeout. I can't even tell you how much it fucked me up to watch strangers deploy social justice language to justify my harassment. More than anything else, that's what broke me. And I'm already seeing people do this to Kit. Please push back on this when you see it. Please know that every time this happens to a public figure, it ends up hurting countless non-famous closeted people. 
Yes, Becky! I know this conversation gets complicated and it can feel like we're stifling our own ability to critique systems, but this level of human collateral damage is unacceptable. If this is our activism, we've truly lost the plot. Ah, I love you so much, Becky. I love Becky so much. And shout out to my mom who said, people need to mind their own business and stay out of others' private lives. Thank you, mom. I love you, mom. My mom's great. All right, so here is what, th this is what Kit tweeted, right? Back for a minute, I'm by. Congrats for forcing an 18-year-old to out himself. That was what we kind of read on the, on that news article, here were some of the replies. So first of all, this guy, Matt, who's was, tweet was quoted in the article says, death to queer baiting discourse forever, sending you love. And then I don't know who you are. Now nah, we can critique our oppressors fabricating half-assed queer themed content to exploit us for money all we damn want to. Show someone this. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. Where did that happen though? Is this oppressor who's fabricating half-ass queer-themed content in the room with us right now, Noah? Are they in the room with us right now? Okay. Look at this. Someone replying right here. We love to see this. Someone who knows how to fucking read, who has some goddamn media literacy, replying with a picture from the book showing that they read the book and understand why this is wrong. So here's, here's the book with with the characters talking right and it says right here there's this idea that if you're not straight you have to tell all your family and friends immediately like you owe it to them but you don't you don't have to do anything until you're ready wow it's like it's right there in the book it's right there in the book yeah you get a like for that nice job now i don't know who you are but you can suck my dick you say seriously no one forced you to come out sorry but that was your choice i only do this to people i hate but this your uh, doesn't need an apostrophe or an E. That's the wrong version of your. Not only do you have no media literacy, but you have no regular literacy. Didn't you deactivate this silly little app? Or maybe not. You deaf good at this game. Maybe you shouldn't have taken a queer role if you weren't ready to deal with your sexuality. Yes, I'm sorry. Everyone needs to know their sexual orientation by the time they're literal children. Otherwise, you can't take the role. Okay, at this point, I'm just ready to say, let's have no kid actors in anything ever again. Because clearly all that happens is tragedy from this. Who, who are we supposed to get instead? First of all, Kit Connor killed it in this role. He was great. We love Nick. We love Heartstopper. Okay, Hearts, I will lay down and die for this show. We've seen this situation when it comes ju not just to sexual orientation, but also to people's life experiences. Like we've seen writers feel pressured to come out about having experienced sexual assault or having experienced abuse because people were saying that they didn't think they were qualified to write about SA or abuse in their stories and things like that. And nobody owes you their trauma. Nobody owes you their identity. We are we're all individual people, okay? And just like let people have their own personal lives and their own personal boundaries. That's all I have to say. Do better world. Mommy's mad. I will see you guys again next week for more videos. In the meantime, Kit and I support Kit. Keep on supporting small businesses. Keep on supporting queer authors. Support Alice Oseman. Support Kit Connor by watching Heartstopper. Support Becky Albertalli by buying her books. And support me by giving this video a like. I love you guys. Bye. Get you some nuts. There was lots of memes. Makes me wonder if I should pick up lesbianism. Chicago. You guys asked for it.